Note number one, note number one is that we have not shown that cosine of x has a power series expansion in the first place. So it's like we're building a house and building the roof first, right? Doesn't always work when you build the roof first, but in this case, it will work. So we have not shown that the cosine of x actually has a power series expansion in the first place. If it does, then the above series is a power series for cosine of x. And let me be a spoiler, it does, and that above series works. Spoiler alert. So number two, if the above series converges to cosine of x, then we can use uh, partial sums to approximate cosine of x. So the idea is we can use the partial sums. We don't have to go all the way to infinity. It might be enough to go to n equals 10 or whatever um, to approximate the cosine of x or any convergent Taylor series. In general, we can let well, remember S, the SN, S subscript N notation standard for the sum of the first N terms? This is similar to that. We can let T sub N of X represent the nth partial sum of a Taylor series. In other words, that would be the sum from, okay, the role of N switches places when you're using partial sums, remember? So, I'll have to use I'll have to use i or k or something like that. I'll use i. So we can use the sum from i equals zero to n. We're stopping at n. So n is the last thing we plug in. Okay, that's just something you have to get used to. I don't know why it's done that way, but it is. Uh, okay, so what is the what is the Taylor series if you don't let it go to infinity? Uh, well, the formula doesn't change, right? It would be the ith derivative now, evaluated at a, divided by instead of n factorial, it would be i factorial, times x minus a to the i. And that, I, I, I realize that looks strange, but if you think about it and write it out longhand, it's just a polynomial of degree n. So, the first term, it would look, if you write it out longhand, it would look just like how we wrote it out longhand earlier, except you would stop it at the nth term. So the first term, it, think about it, would be just f evaluated at a plus f prime evaluated at a times x minus a plus f double prime evaluated at a x minus a squared divided by 2 factorial plus dot 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 plus the nth derivative evaluated at a over n factorial x minus a to the n. And you stop it there. You stop it there and, and you could use perhaps that polynomial to estimate say the cosine of x, right? The above partial sum, T sub n is what we call it, is a polynomial of degree n called the nth degree Taylor polynomial of f at a. Let's go ahead and find T6 of x when f of x is equal to cosine of x and a equals zero. And let's use it to estimate the cosine of point two. So the way we're, this can get a little confusing if you use the formula directly. So what we're going to do is just write out longhand the sum we developed for the cosine of x and stop when we get to an exponent of 6. Does that make sense? So what we had for that then was, remember it was 1, for, for cosine it was 1 minus x squared over 2, 2 factorial, which is just 2, plus x to the fourth over four factorial minus, what's the next one? x to the sixth over six factorial. Remember that cosine's an even function? That can help you remember this formula, can't it? It means the exponents better be even. And then we'll, we would stop there. There's your sixth degree Taylor polynomial for cosine. So then what could we do? Just plug in 0.2 and we'd have 1 minus 
0.2 squared over 2 plus 0.2 to the 4th power over 4 factorial minus 0.2 to the 6th power over 6 factorial. Anybody have a calculator handy? Okay, 1 minus uh, 0.2 squared divided by 2 plus 0.2 to the 4th divided by uh, 24 is 4 factorial, right? Yeah. And then minus 0.2 to the 6th uh, divided by uh, what is 720? Yeah, so I heard you say 1-1 one, one after the 9-8, the and th I was expecting this value. Yeah. So yeah, just make sure you punch in your calculator. It probably just missed something. It missed a button on your calculator. Anyway, I'm getting this value on my calculator uh, for the approximation. So I get that this is 0.9800665778. That's what the calculator spit out. Now, it would be interesting, though, to, to go ahead and, and put in 0.2 on the calculator. Let me make sure I'm in the right mode, radian mode. And let's go cosine 0.2. Oh, wow. That's pretty good. So have you ever wondered how your calculator works? I'm not here to make the claim that your calculator uses uh, this, this approximation to get values of cosine, but it uses mathematics. It doesn't, it doesn't have them in memory. It, it can use um, this sort of polynomial or, an, or maybe a different sort of method. We actually don't know because TI won't tell us. Their, their algorithm for getting it is, well, it's proprietary, right? But it, would be, it gives you an idea mathematically of how it's done, of how you can get a value for a transcendental function like any of the trig functions evaluated at a point e to e to the 5 right how do you get that well you use a power series or some other way uh, some other polynomial or some other way to get it so it at least gives you an idea of where some of this stuff comes from